Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about the common form balance sheet. This is a common way to analyze the balance sheet. And uh, if you guys are following along with our financial accounting and financial statement analysis course here at Gen Invest, this is part of lesson nine. Uh, so make sure to jump into our Discord group and Patreon if you'd like to jump into our investing education course. And uh, this is the ninth lesson in that course where we discuss the common form balance sheet. Uh, for those of you who have been keeping up with the course, uh, this is pretty similar in nature to lesson seven, the common form income statement. Again, the common form income statement was a way to view the trend of different accounts or line items on the income statement over time as a portion of revenue. Similarly, the common form balance sheet is a way to understand the trend of particular balance sheet line items as a portion of total assets or total liabilities plus equity. So as we know from our financial accounting lessons, the balance sheet balances according to assets being equal to liabilities and equity. This means that everything that the firm has is either owed through liabilities, through other third parties, or owned by the firm in equity accounts. And so what we're going to do today is build the common form income statements for Brooks Automation and Amazon. So as you see here, I've pulled in the historical balance sheet data on a five-year annual basis for the date ended of both Brooks and Amazon's fiscal years. Uh, this happens to be end of September for Brooks and end of December for Amazon. Um, oh, just noticed a little typo here. This should be Amazon. And we're going to use these balance sheets to build the common form balance sheets. I'll do it for Brooks Automation in this video. And then those of you following along with the course will also receive this spreadsheet as per usual in the Discord group so that you can practice and build your own common form balance sheets for Amazon, uh, similar to the way that you build common form income statements for Amazon. And uh, so we'll, we'll run through building the balance sheet for Brooks Automation. We'll do a quick analysis of those common form balance sheets. What are the high level and, and most important pieces that we can analyze and pull from that balance sheet? And, uh, and then we'll let you do the same for Amazon. So to start, and I'm also going to show you how I can build this sheet with just a few keystrokes in Excel using some really awesome shortcuts. Uh, so to start, I had already built this out, but for the purposes of this video, I will rebuild it. And uh, I just used the command Alt-H-E-C to specifically just clear the contents of cells. I didn't want to get rid of all of the formatting uh, that I already had on this uh, balance sheet. I just wanted to get rid of the contents so that as you'll see, when we add formulas to this sheet, the formatting in the sheet will remain. And uh, that saves us a lot of time. So how does the common form balance sheet begin? We take each account on the balance sheet and we divide it by the total assets or total liabilities and equity on that balance sheet. So we can start with the first line item on every balance sheet, which is cash and cash equivalents. We then head over to the balance sheet. We find cash and cash equivalents. And we divide that by total assets. But we're going to do something special here with the total assets. We're going to lock it into row 20. And you'll see why this is important in just a moment. But locking it into row 20 means that as we're copying this formula into other cells, it will make sure that the denominator being pulled here, this asset value of uh, 600 or 686,000, in thousands, so 686 million, uh, is, uh, is being pulled um, just from row 20 in, in our future calculations. So we, we see now that cash and cash equivalents at the end of the year 2016, fiscal year 2016 for Brooks Automation was 12.4% of total assets or total liabilities and equity, however you want to view what we're doing here. And a quick way to then make this entire sheet, and sorry, what I did up here is control shift right, that then highlights all the cells that are within, uh, uh, that, that have no spaces between cells. So this will move all the way over to column H. I can then control R to effectively copy this formula over to the right. And then I highlighted this area and control C to copy it. And I'll do what's called now paste special, alt E S F, enter. And you'll see this has now populated my entire common form balance sheet. Super simple. Um, maybe not super simple, but, but super easy and efficient uh, once you get an understanding for Excel formulas. So here I used Alt-ESF to take a formula 
that was here in B5 and copy only that formula, but not values or formats into all of the other relevant cells on this sheet. And so for the next couple minutes, we'll do a quick walkthrough of, okay, what can we learn from this analysis? And then here, we'll have you do the same for Amazon. Okay, so um, I made a couple notes here. I cheated a little bit. I had already made this uh, document before starting this video. Um, but we'll, we'll go through the rest of, of the balance sheet. But here we see cash balance trends up, generally a sign that the business is more liquid, meaning that it can meet short-term heavy obligations. Um, but specifically in Brooks Automation's case, they sold a business in 2018, led to an increase in cash balance. They also used the proceeds from that sale to pay off debt. Uh, so as we'll see down here, also in the year 2018 to 2019, they paid off a significant portion of that debt. Uh, then we've got marketable securities, um, not really a trend here. It looks like they bought a few things in 18, sold them in 19 and 20. Accounts receivable trending down generally. That's a good sign for cash flow dynamics. If more of your sales are happening in cash as opposed to accounts receivable, that's a good sign. If those are new terms to you, definitely go check out our financial accounting series. Uh, inventories trending down, also a good sign that cash is being unlocked by removing Assets stuck in, uh, in operating asset accounts like inventories. Uh, prepaid expenses, other current assets, not much of a trend there. Fixed assets, also not much of a trend. Uh, Long-term marketable securities, yep, trending down. Deferred tax assets, this is related to the, the business sale, goodwill. Okay, so goodwill down 2018 from 2017 because of the sale of the cryogenics business, same thing with intangible assets, and um, acquired a series of businesses in 2019 as well, which increased both intangible assets and goodwill. Uh, so goodwill, again, lesson eight in our series. Uh, goodwill is the total value paid in excess of the fair value of a business when it is acquired. Um, so generally, if, if you're acquiring another business, you're not going to be able to get that business for the fair value of its balance sheet. There are tons of assets that aren't adequately captured in balance sheets via the general, uh, generally accepted accounting principles. And uh, you also generally, to, to acquire a business, you need to incentivize the management team or stakeholders of that business to accept your offer, which means you need to offer some kind of premium dollar to the fair value of that business, which will then ultimately get captured on your balance sheet if the acquisition goes through under goodwill. Um, again, lesson eight. So for those of you who are following along in our course, that's lesson eight portion of long-term debt, accounts payable, generally trending down. So that's kind of not the best sign, uh, Not definitely not a terrible sign, but you, you also want accounts payable to be increasing. Uh, that'd be also a, a positive showing of cash flow dynamics. Deferred revenue, um, also somewhat declining. Um, but given that they th these guys recognize revenue on a hours completed a project basis, so it's a different revenue recognition policy. So we're we won't get too deep into deferred revenue here. Okay. Long-term debt, as we noted, dropped 18 to 19. Pension liabilities, pretty constant. Additional paid in capital. ASCI, treasury stock. So treasury stock is any um, uh, shares purchased back on the open market. Then accumulated deficit, we see this is shrinking, pretty awesome. Um, so Brooks Automation within the last years was becoming, uh, receiving a, a positive net income, which means that this is uh, shortening the gap in the accumulated deficit. And soon enough, hopefully, this account will be a, uh, a retained earnings account. So a, effectively, what is a accumulated deficit account, but in the positive. All right, awesome. So this is how you build the common form balance sheet. I've done this for Brooks. I've left you all of the information in this workbook to do so for Amazon. So for all the guys in the course, uh, you can get cracking on this. By the time you see this video, uh, this document will certainly be uploaded in our Discord server. Um, so all the best guys. I hope you have a great rest of your week and um, be sure to like and subscribe if this is your first time here. And also follow us across all of our other platforms, which are TikTok, YouTube, Discord, Instagram, and Twitch. Uh, we also have a Twitter, but we just started that. But if you want to give us a follow there too, that'd be great. 
Uh, you can find the links to everything in our Discord. And uh, if you're interested in joining our course, that is active on Patreon. And uh, you can find the Patreon link also here in our profile on YouTube. Uh, so, yep. Have a great week, guys.